Videos Den Ramon, number 215. How to build an elliptical arch, demonstration A, with bricks of manual elaboration of face site placed with dry mortar M7 and a half. Video created and owned by Ramon Guadarai Parera. Traditional first class official bricklayer. Construction technician. Member of the National Network of Teachers of Traditional Construction. Second and last part. Step by step. We keep putting these special pieces. It must be taken into account that the angle of placement is 45 degrees. You also have to maintain an equality in all the joints. First we wet the base and we have put a little mortar. We remove from the front the mortar to be able to put some separators that make a gauge function. Always trying to follow the inclination of the arch. The advantage is that with this wood, when I touch the template in the first row of bricks, it gives me the placement and depth of the piece of the third row. We try to maintain the 45 degrees of inclination using the protractor. We started with the central part because it facilitates the final delivery at each end. So it is easier for each end to end up the same as the other. If we had started at one extreme, it would be very difficult for the final delivery at the other end to be the same as at the initial end. The right part is already done and now what you have to do is continue on the left. In the image you can see the shape of the start and it must end the same on the other side. This tool was in a container and it looked like it could be useful. And to perform this work is extremely useful. By having these tips alive is ideal to remove the mortar from the angles. It looks like a painter's tool. We are cleaning well. Scraping the mortar thoroughly in all angles and corners so that they are as clean as possible. It is necessary to scrub many times with this tool to unhook the mortar. The brick of manual manufacture has a lot of core and it costs a lot to clean it. We also use a cloth and, if necessary, a plastic bristle brush. This tool is ideal to reach the corners. The pointing trowel could also be used. We will start to place the final row of bricks and start from each side, using the pieces that we have already cut. The normal thing is to first put a little mortar in the base where we are going to put the piece. It could also be put in the piece that we want to place. But in this case we have preferred to put the mortar in the pieces that are already put. When putting it, as you can see, we check the start with the square. Nor is it necessary to be perfect. But that is not very different. Using this gauge that we made and that gave us the depth of the bricks of the first row, also gives us the depth of the bricks of this third row to keep them in the same plane as the first. We support this gauge in the template of the arch and in the first row of bricks and it gives us the depth of the row that we are placing now. When putting bricks of these characteristics it is good to fill the joints, because the mortar is tender and the piece fits better. You should also check the level and if we see a small difference try to hide it when putting the next piece.
We are placing the mortar on the brick already placed to place the next piece. You have to place the smooth part of the brick on the bottom, because it is the part that looks more The mortar has to be well distributed and it must be quite fluid and rich in binders because that is how it fits better. The mortar we are using comes prepared, but if it is necessary to add a binder it can be done. We are filling well the joints and covering the small holes that may be because it is the right time, since being the tender mortar is well coupled. <coughs> we are keeping the pieces clean, even if we have to put the mortar back in them, because the mortar put in now will be fresher than what was previously. We are checking the level by having the template of the arch completely vertical and as we will see later, we also check the level with the squad because it is much easier for us. We put the mortar well distributed and try to keep the job as clean as possible. This gauge gives us the height of the piece. Always leave a little slack to be able to take out the template. We are cutting the mortar with the pointing trowel. We continue to fill the joints, because as we have said before, the time is right because the mortar is fresh. We continue placing the pieces. We started at one extreme because when the arch template is placed there is no weight problem. At the same time that we put the piece with the fingers we must try to maintain the position of the piece with respect to the previous one. In the front we are guided by the template, but in the back we are guided by the piece that is already set. Apparently it was a little low and we had to add a little mortar by pressing with the pointing trowel. As we have said before we check with the squad instead of with the level. The square rests on the template of the arch and on the side of the bricks of the first and third row, and must rest completely on the upper part of the brick of the third row. This indicates that the brick is placed level in the sagittal plane. It is important, although not visible, that the bricks are well dampened. You can see the streams of water that have come down the surface of the template when we have wet them. We do a bit of swing to the brick to fit properly. Always checking its placement with respect to the previous piece and collecting all the mortar that falls.
We put another piece checking its correct height, collecting the mortar before it falls and working with the pointing trowel to cover all the holes that may remain. This will be the last piece that we place in this part. We will check with the square that its top face is perpendicular to the side face of the brick of the first row and to the template of the arch. In the image you can see how one arm of the square rests on the template and side faces of the lower and upper bricks while the other arm rests completely on the upper face of the upper brick, forming a 90 degree angle. This is a side view of the arch with the square placed in the upper brick of the third row so that you can see the look of the arch from this perspective and the row of bricks laid. We start at this end to end up in the center. This brick that we are going to put it has been modified a bit in its back because it touched from behind and it did not let us place the brick well by the top. It is good to check the placement of the pieces without mortar to be able to appreciate the problems that may arise. If it is not done and the problem is presented with the mortar put, it must be removed and it is more complicated. Whenever possible we like to do it this way, checking first and placing later. And especially when it is a difficult site, such as startups and other complicated sites. Instead of putting the level up, I put the squad. It is appreciated that the horizontal arm does not touch the piece in front and it is necessary to lower it a little behind. We are filling the joints well. We also check the depth of the piece with the gauge. Sometimes the checks have to be made more than once. We have already commented that it is good to check the placement of the piece without mortar especially when the matter is not very clear, and if necessary the piece is retouched. We put mortar in the hole base in which the piece must be placed. And when we put it on we are looking and checking the separation of one piece with the other. We put the brick trying to fit well. At the same time that we collect the remaining mortar we appreciate if it stands out or not with respect to the previous one. We check with the template placing it following the inclination of the arch to be able to check the correct position of the upper edge of the brick. And so we get the first and third rows are completely parallel. We appreciate that the first brick protrudes with respect to the second. We give a few small strokes with the handle of the pointing trowel to delay it and align it with the other. We are going to place the last pieces. The last one will be key so that the fit between the two sides of the third row is correct and the row presents a continuous aspect. It has not been necessary to touch it up because it has been tried that have the right size to fit well. At the same time that we place the brick we press it with a back and forth movement causing the mortar to protrude. As we have said before we check the placement of the piece before putting the mortar. So we can see if we must move the first brick leaving the smallest joints for the fit of the last piece. In this image it is very well appreciated how the gauge indicates the correct height of the piece. You have to be very careful with this because, if it does not go well the curvature of the arch will be false.
and in this way it is achieved that the bricks of the first and third row are parallel. Care must be taken not to make mistakes in the orientation of the brick faces. In this row, the smooth face is placed downward because it is the most visible. When you are working it is important from time to time, to withdraw a little from the work point to see the faults that may be there and disguise them, if it is convenient to do so. We are filling the joints well and then clean thoroughly, either scraping or with a cloth. The arch is already made. Now we proceed to remove the template. The image shows that we also place a support in the center although it is very difficult to give way, for greater security. We are taking out the pieces easily because we have used the wedges. If it were not for the wedges we could not remove the pieces and we would have to break some of them. Striking laterally we remove the wedge easily. You can see the space that remains between the template and the support. The template, although completely free, will still be in its initial position until we remove the wedges from the other side. We repeat the operation on the other side. When we remove the wedge on the right side the template will yield and completely detach from the arch. We proceed to remove the template. Although it is already dry. It is necessary to go with caution, since if the arch suffered a blow there could be problems. In the image we can see that we have increased the height of the side walls to counter force and counteract the thrust of the arch. If this arch had to be loaded now, it would be convenient to raise a couple of rows of bricks at the sides to counteract the extra thrust of the load. You always have to think about what might happen because when you draw the template the arch could yield on the sides. And we already have the arch finished. Now we will clean a little the burrs of the bricks of the first row in its lower part so that it looks well finished. End of the second and last part. Video created and owned by Ramon Guadarai Parera. Year 2018 video number 215 of my construction videos collection. 08328 Lela, Barcelona, Catalunya, Spain.